Hey girl, Marissa here. You are listening to the Codependent Dummy Podcast. As a young woman, you have been raised, reinforced, and rewarded for putting the needs of others above your own. Now, in your 20s, you're finding yourself exhausted, exasperated, and enveloped in shit relationships, especially the one you have with yourself. Codependency is a way of being where we put the feelings, wants, and needs of others above our own in an unconscious attempt to meet our own feelings, wants, and needs. Sorry to break it to you, sis, but that is not sustainable. This podcast is to help you undo all that so you can stop playing small and start taking up space, you dummy. Let's get to it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Codependent Dummy podcast. Today, we have Randy Kofsky. She is a marriage and family therapist and body worker. Randy provides cranial sacral therapy in Los Angeles and specializes in somatic psychotherapy for individuals. She works with couples as well to rewire communication habit, habits for enhanced intimacy and connection. Randy, thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. All right, so first question, no mystery. Randy, how do you conceptualize codependency? Well, um, I see the latest, right? This is kind of an always moving in some direction sort of a definition, but, um, or thing to be defined. Um, for me, I'd say codependency is the tendency to put a person, place, or thing in front of one's core experience with their self. Wow. A tendency. Yes. I love it. Keep going. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, which then leads to a chronic, not quite knowing what the the feeling situation might be or um, just having some sort of like a little bit of separation between what might be happening at at a very base level with oneself and the experience that they have with others. I love that attendant. I just, I can't get over that. A tendency. Can you give us an example? Yeah. Either from your own life or a patient you've worked with. Sure. Sure. Um, I mean, I think, you know, and I say tendency, right? This comes back to this idea of wired, right? We're just, wait, we somehow just get put on board that way and uh, continues. And I'm referencing myself having, having been very familiar with this, this way of being Mm -hmm. at times. Um, yes. I mean, so in, um, growing up for me, I was in a family and we have, um, there was someone that was, um, disabled. And so that, um, put on, uh, switch at times for us to have to work with what was going on for the person that needed a little more help than everybody else. And so that, right. is, you know, could be seen as one kind of, um, dent towards that, that predisposition. Um, not that it, obviously not the fault of anybody, but that's just a way that us as humans will, will, um, seek to a situation. Um, mm-hmm. I'd say professional, a lot of times with the folks that come to see me, um, it's kind of something I call, I mean, or I've seen it referred to as, um, we're calling it recovery, recovering golden children, where mm-hmm. at some point for good, you know, some reason, some way or another, um, a child is kind of put on a pedestal. Um, and in this way is, is kind of satisfies one of the adult's emotional needs in some way, all kind of pretty unconscious for everybody. And then um, that then in the in the adult world leads to kind of a kind of a chronic inner anxiety and this kind of being in some sort of perfectionistic way of thinking, um, which then crowds 
their ability to kind of when um, just needing life to kind of look a certain way or go a certain way. And then that bringing up a huge amount of anxiety when it doesn't because the this, this doesn't feel safe if it's not, doesn't kind of click in in a certain mode and how that interacts um, with relationships, which would make complete sense. Right. So I'd say that's a key piece of um, codependent, you can put under the codependent label. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, with your experience, having to, right, I love, I love this language, like to no one's fault, it just was demanded due to the environment, someone was disabled, needing more attention, focus, assistance, thus there's less attention, focus, assistance elsewhere. And you sense that that led to, at least for you, a tendency to put others' attention, focus, assistance ahead of your own. What, what did that look like in your relationships? As an adult, well, I would most usually just feel like I'm going to be needed to help on some level at some point. And so I kind of... Um, you know, and then obviously it interacts with that whatever personality you actually happen to have, right? So some people kind of take it on as a full identity, and others it kind of stays more in a in a in a more oh this is an attendancy way. Um, so it kind of just you know hopefully at some point you get we have get a chance to be a little more conscious of of how it's playing out. Um, so I'd say with me though definitely this idea of I'm going to be needed to help. Mm. On some, at some at some point, that probably was the if I could sum it up in a, in a line, headline, that was it. Right. And yeah. so you were just always unknowingly, unconsciously looking for opportunities how to help. To help. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just it out. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, right. And then you get then you have some idea of just like, oh, okay, because then if I do this, then I'll know that'll be be perceived a certain way because you're used to that, right? So it kind of goes back around. So I was talking about with uh, the golden golden children idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any specific memory of you, like, and your help radar springing into action? Oh gosh, the help radar springing. I mean, I'm sure there's like a million. I'm trying to fit, find like one that would be humorous. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like once I was working on like a movie set. And, um, you know, just we were doing more of like a guerrilla type movie set work in a, in a different city than L.A. And um, and uh, I had a role as like I was kind of just like the resident massage therapist. I had just gotten out of grad school, uh, massage school. And so I was so excited to like be able to, you know, like warm up people's muscles or whatever, just get people prepared. I don't know. <laughs> and I would just go around and be like, hey, do you uh, do you need a, you know, a shoulder massage or something? Like it was just hilarious. So mm. yeah, like when my, I was pretty identified with like being able to help being of, of use. If I, if I didn't, there was often the feeling of like, as going back to codependency, not knowing what to do with that self, like that self couldn't really just relax or be as was. Right. So yeah, yeah that's an example. Or you would worry like you weren't filling your job or someone was going to notice or you might get in trouble or. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, all of these, there are so many depth, there's so many layers to these things. I think ultimately I just didn't know how to really just be relaxed so it was probably more like feeling like I'd be judged on some level if right. if I was just sitting there and relaxing or having a conversation or not ready, you know. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. It's a really, it could be a harsh way to, to interact because you don't, mm -hmm. you're not really available for yourself or anybody else, which is, of course, the, the, the interesting piece. We'll say more to that. How how were you in being quote unquote so available right. to everyone? How were you in reality unavailable? Yeah, I mean, you're basically unavailable to yourself and others, which is it's ironic because which is the paradox of life, right? Yet another one. Um, well, that's kind of it, right? You think you're 
you're pretty your your the focus right the focus is so is the the focus is so um um what's the word with the eyes external um, no when you're um with your vision when it's myopic your the focus mm. is so myopic so that you don't you're so in this tunnel vision place that you don't necessarily even see that you can't you're not in a place where you can connect with others and and the the, the most heart wrenching part and I see this saw this myself and certainly in others too, you know, when um, the f people really do want to reach you, they do want to see, they do want to meet the real you and they're, they're available and open for that. And they're ultimately there's this rejection thing going on. So here we are in this, in the psychoanalysis of it. Right. So, right. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's a pretty, it's, it's, it could definitely feel like a, a labyrinthine sort of experience. And that's what I find a lot with the, with the clients who come, um, and which is why I'm focusing on this kind of the recovery, recovering the golden golden kids or pedestal kids because it can you, you don't really even know it's one of those things where you don't necessarily even know that's what's happening until right. until the moment when you show up in a therapy office or on a on a body work table, which is the work that kind of got me into into this world. Yes. Okay, I wanna I wanna get to that and just one more. You keep yeah. dropping these tokens Go. of wisdom. Okay. Say more about labyrinth. The labyrinthine. Well, you know, depending how big the labyrinth is. <laughs> but I'm thinking, I'm thinking, when I said that I was thinking about the ones where you're, you know, there's a large hedge or a large wall and you're just walking, you can't see the overall picture, right? So you're you're just going down one corridor and you you think you're coming to the end or at or at some certain juncture and lo and behold um you you, you might go that way but you think it's your, your perception is is limited your, your perception is that it's going one way and the reality is it's taking you you might think for example you're going further towards love and connection and you're actually going further away from it right that that's probably the sum of that yeah yeah i love it Pretty profound, pretty intense, you know, Very. and welcome to life. It's nothing new under the sun. So right. we're all in good company. Yes. And yeah, no, that has definitely been a truth for me to discover in my own codependency, right? Thinking I'm, I'm so other conscious, right? Not self-conscious. My focus is so external. I, I, I thought I, I interacted with, right, I had this tendency of obsessing on others. And yet it really, it really was myopic and it wasn't cultivating real connection. It was me thinking what other people wanted from me without actually connecting with or asking them. Right. It's, you know, if you think about it back and you think back on it, it's like, has it happened? But to your, when you're, you know, to your point, how much psychic energy we're using, right? How much, what's happening? Cause we're not in real time while we're thinking and considering and, and trying to, you know, do it well, we're actually divorcing ourselves from the present moment, which is where yeah. connection happens as we right. know. So, yeah. um, no, totally. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, shifting towards your, your service. Yeah. Your, what you offer, how does codependency show up in the body? So codependency shows up in the body in a variety of ways. Um, I think many of us know what it feels like when um, it's a, if, if we just follow the breath, right? There's a, there's a contraction, right? There's a contracted state where we're, we're feeling, um, we're protecting our heart in some level. Um, so it often will, will, will have this sort of over, it's a C-shaped sort of thing with the spine. Mm -hmm. um, more interestingly, or maybe not more, but another view of it is, um, well, there's the muscle system and then the viscera, right? Our organs. And so the muscle system is fascinating because ultimately 
muscles different for the way we for us to express and move and, and be in the world in hum, the human body the um, animal body right you can't kind of um versus a tree let's say right the tree doesn't really differentiate its bark the bark the, the, the trunk's going to stay the same same stay in the same same way my coding and anatomy teacher but um the um muscle is is differentiated right there's different the, the muscles have to are have to move a certain way they have to be this these muscles have to differentiate than these muscles for the arm to go right mm -hmm. um and so in codependency often because there is oftentimes one of the symptoms is a very a big lack of of taking care of the self um and so you know there'll be back pain or headaches or you know some kind of chronic issue that's not that's kind of just shoved to the side um mm -hmm. that the, the 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 tissue the muscle tissue is often adhesed together so it's kind of like it, it's codependent it's not it's not differentiated it can't all the muscles don't have the free range that they need to have a full motion happen in the full range that it, that it potentially could. So it's, wow. it's kind of limiting itself in that way. Wow. Um, so that's kind of, um, and, not, and obviously it's not, we're not trying to, uh, you know, diagnose everyone who ever had, <laughs> you know, ever had an adhesion down shoulder. It's not, it's not that, but this is just the way that the body expresses um, when something is limited. Um, mm -hmm. And then it'll even show up in, in the viscerize once in an anatomy class where we're working with, with um, um, human forms and uh, human organs. And um, it just showed that when there is some issue, let's say if there was um, just some, some, kind of, some kind of chronic thing in the system and when one organ was having some problems, we, the, the organs actually came in and, and, and had it started to take the shape of the organ that needed help. Wow. So the organs will, will, will all, all hands on deck, they'll come in and they'll like, re, you know, the, you know, the spleen's like, okay, I got this and the gallbladder is going to take this part and, you know, really kind of work, which was just really amazing, honestly. Wow. So, so it helps to give a little bit more of just like, yes, there, there is something beautiful about this tendency, right? There's, we, we know we, we're, a lot of us are trying to walk off or, you know, change, change the certain structure that it, that it gave us internally. Um, but, and, but we can lose sometimes or, or try to vilify or want to um, forget that there it is coming from an innately beautiful and, and um, yeah, just kind of a generous idea. Right. Connection, right? Yeah. Trying yeah. to connect mm -hmm. and yet just going right. about it like it's just yeah you know in a very disconnected manner yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so when I say codependent it wasn't so much that you know it's not like anybody that's ever helping is codependent like you know let's be clear right it's more yeah. that that um the um whatever was happening in this in this system chances are was someone that what that wasn't necessarily putting themselves completely in their in, in their um connected with connected self-connection and therefore right. it, was, it was showing in in, in it, it shows that to that level it shows in our cellular structure which right. is what's amazing um in having uh, a bodywork practice because that's what you get to see you start you get to connect on that level with before before the words before the mind right so it's a it's a different, different planet at times mm -hmm. so i'm hearing due to one of the common symptoms mm, behaviors of codependency neglect of self it can show up in the body Right, you said chronic issues, migraines, back pain, et cetera, potentially in our muscle system or the viscera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Wherever the body can express, right? This is how the body talks to us or, or tries. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know. In, one of the more um, codependent, um, but oh my gosh, my poor body. 
Um, you're just, I mean, as you're talking, the montage of physical ailments and issues I've had. And I even remember when I really became um, very like people pleasing, wanting to, um, yeah, like be, be perfect. And yeah, I don't know when, when the approval, I was participating in a lot of half marathons. And so I was running myself ragged and I actually developed plantar fasciitis, which is, you know, runners do get that, but usually it's associated with people who are overweight and, you know, really taxing their feet. But here I was, this like spring chicken, just running my feet. And I, I would be running Randy and my feet were on fire. They were literally on fire and I would be running and it was 6 a.m. in the morning. And I was like, oh, the road must be warm. I like, I literally, I was so disconnected and just wanting to check off the runs and, and do what I needed to do. Like, it just, yeah, I don't know you're. Yeah, it, it just shows how powerful the mind, I mean, you know, we talk about the, the if you just take the quote mind over matter, it could really be applied anywhere. Right. Yeah. Okay, your screen froze, but I can totally hear you. Okay. Let's see if it adjusts. And then we'll move on to the next question. It's totally, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I'll edit that little break. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, how does body work help? Well, first of all, what is body work for the, for the layman? Okay. So body work is ultimately, ultimately body work. So usually every, most body workers who are going to one day say that they're body workers started in the world of massage. And this is just the very broad, broad strokes here. Interesting. But ultimately, um, massage might be kind of a signature way that one approaches the body. Maybe it's um, using um, a form such as shiatsu or, you know, just kind of a more creative way, but it's more like a, there's a, a, some sort of programmed idea of potentially how to approach the body. And, you know, there could be debates all day about this, but I'm just gonna like put it out there as that. Once, once a person kind of goes along a little bit, you know, or they, regardless, sometimes there's comes a point when, when, when someone gets a little bit more kind of interested in, um, basically in terms of kind of just letting the body almost lead the session, like in the sense that, you know, there'll be a, there'll be a tension pattern, for example. And mm -hmm. so at this point, I kind of use three different ways to tune in and then unwind the session due to that pattern. That's wow. that. So I have like no real idea of what I'm going to do. Um, wow. I mean, I'd imagine at some point I'll be touching <laughs> the body, right? Maybe I might be touching the feet, touching the head, but there's no pre idea um, of how it works. Cause uh, I need the, I need the body to tell, tell me what's, wow. what's going to, what's happening here. So yeah, I'd say that's the, you know, just a basic cut difference. And what's an example of a tension pattern? Um, it's really anything for therapists. I'll say, I mean, just because I know, you know, both therapists will, will be here, especially for, via the, the, the amount of zooming that's been happening the last couple of years. So a tension pattern might be neck, head, and jaw. And there'll just be a certain tension that comes on, you know, it could even be in the eyes and maybe like, like clockwork every day, three hours in, it's like, well, a certain pattern's creeping up somewhere. And that's, wow. that's an example of a pattern that, that'll, that'll um, try to express itself. Wow. Um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I know initially when the pandemic started providing therapy online, yeah, every day, like probably within the first three to four hours, my upper back. Yeah, I, I was like, is it my bra? 
Like what okay. is, what? The chair, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So that would be a tension pattern. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. And all right, so that's body work. And for, for codependency, how, how can body work help alleviate codependency? Well, there's different kinds of body work. And um, I was, I was thinking about cranial sacral therapy specifically. Um, but I'll tie that in. I mean, basically how some sort of body work, energy work, even massage will help with um, chronic a feeling of, of chronic codependency, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. is that it forces just the, by nature of coming to a session and being horizontal on the table in the middle of the day, you're already breaking some codependent pa pattern. Mm -hmm. You're that because you're, you're you're away from the person, place, or thing, and there's an opening, there's a chance, there's a space to tune into oneself that much deeper. Right. So just at the gate, right, that's an example. Um, that said, when you're doing something like cranial sacral work, which is a little bit more, it's a little less, um, let's say if we're talking about more myofascial or deep tissue, which is um, really working with the, the muscle and the fascia, and it can be very it can go really deep. It can be relaxing, but you're pretty much deep in your, you're, you're using your, most of your muscle, uh, most of your the body work is using some weight to, to, to man, potentially manipulate something, um, feeling and, and working with the body to, to change it. Not, not in, in that, that term of manipulation, um, where something like cranial sacral work, which is born out of osteopathy, which is working mostly with the bones and the breath, not to get too heady around it. But essentially mm -hmm. the idea is that you're working with the motility, not the mobility, the motility of the bone structure. And so you can work, you're working at the frequency of the cerebral spinal fluid. So everything is slows way down. It's like womb womb, um, um, you know, uh, forgetting the word, but yeah, it's just kind of like the a womb wave, right? It's like, it's, it's, it's that rhythm, the womb rhythm. Mm -hmm. And you're working with this rhythm that's kind of, you can feel throughout the body, um, cranial sacral, mostly in the head and the sacrum, because those are the places where there's the most bone. So there's the most information, but, but you can feel it at any, any bone anywhere. And by having somebody who just think about attachment and all the pieces, by having a practitioner present and tuned into this level of rhythm, you're naturally at some point that you, you get below the mind, the thoughts tune off and it's somehow, I mean, most people have had massages, you have some sort of feeling of relaxation, you're kind of following the music, it's lovely, um, but there might not be this it might not stay with you that long. Maybe it hopefully will stay with you through the evening into the next day. So, but this kind of work is really getting fundamentally into the nervous system. You're working with the, the cranial nerves, which is con coincides with the polyvagal system. Mm -hmm. So your ability to affect the entire body is that much more profound. Wow. So that helps. That, okay, I have right? three go, questions. Please, go for it. What does motility mean? Motility. So it's kind of, if we think about mobility, right here, I'm moving my, my fingers. Yes, this is mobility. The motility is a vibration of the bone. So it's kind of the, um, the frequency. Wow. So it's a little more, if, if I'm even hopefully giving it, giving it proper, uh, <laughs> proper naming, that's my understanding of it. That's how it, it's, it's the, the most basic way that I was able to, to wrap my head around it. That was it. Mm. And so it's working with a, a vibrational frequency versus a, a, a gross movement. Wow. And then what's, this is the codependent dummy podcast so we're learning what's yes the sacrum the sacrum is the um the bone at the bottom of the spine 
-hmm. So by the bottom of the vertebrae. So there's usually this little like diamond shaped mm -hmm. apparatus and that, that would be our sacrum. Okay. And then cranial? Cranial sacral. So the cranium and the, the sacral, the sacrum. Okay. The sacral. So everyone knows we're touching our head and cranial. our lower back. Yes. Okay. And the 101 explanation of our polyvagal system for our listeners who aren't familiar with that. Yeah, so the polyvagal system. So essentially, um, we used to think of the nervous system or we have a, we have a or we're in this growing place of thinking about the nervous system in a different way. But we used to think about it as basically being either turned on or turned off. We were either sympathetic and open and ready or, or you were, or sympathetic and running and fleeing or parasympathetic and resting and digesting, right? These are the overall terms. And so fight or flight. Mm -hmm. Or, right, or, um, right, fight, flight, and the freeze piece, or you're resting and digesting, you're able to kind of, maybe the freeze actually might have even been considered para actually. But regardless, it was this idea that we kind of did some sort of break and gas system. And that's how that's how the nervous system functioned. And then polyvagal theory came in um, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And um, the idea with polyvagal is saying like, no, actually you need both the parasympathetic and the sympathetic to bring on this thing that we call socialization. So, and the idea is not so much you need one or the other, but you need them to be fluid. You need, you need mm. to be able, the nervous system has to be chill enough that it could flow from one state to the other, right? Because sympathetic uh, might be fight, flight, freeze, or flight or fret, fl fight or flight, but it's also playtime and tummy time that that's, that works in there too with babies. And then mm. um, with the, um, in the other, with the parasympathetic, it might be fleeing or immobile, you know, freezing, sorry, freezing um, and being immobile um, for danger, but it's also resting and snuggling and, and all these other key things that we need as humans. So, um, so the idea is that like, how is the nervous system feel safe enough to be able to naturally flow to in those two states, those, these, the states. Mm. So not so much like a switch, but like a right. light dimmer. Okay. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> I'll bring it. <laughs> yes. The light dimmer yes. of our nervous system. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay, and why do codependents need body work? I'd say at this point in the world in 2022, most people need body work. Mm -hmm. If you're in a situation where you just work with people, it doesn't, regardless of you know, if that's going to be, if you identify with some codependent way of being, um, the body is in real time. And so any way that it can discharge extra stuff before the mind steps in and, and says, Hey, okay, well, we're going to do it this way and that way, which is beautiful and fine, obviously, like we could, there's so much beautiful work that can happen with the mind, but the if if at the body level things can just be integrated it saves up that much more energy right and you have that much more to to apl apply to 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 the joy and the fun in your life mm -hmm. so and then. it feels good it feels good it feels good and it's um it's a way to start to develop intimacy with oneself without getting, you know, it's just into the intimate. It's like, oh, okay, this is my experience. Um, right. And so it's, um, yeah, the beginning of that in a safe place. Um, yeah, so it has, it's, it's like the possibilities are endless. Right. When you, when you can tune into your body. Mm -hmm. They are, they are so endless. So, I am curious your thoughts. Like recently, I think I've shared about this on the episode before, but yeah, it just, it was so, I was so conscious of it, not for the first time, but like, um, yeah, I am becoming more and more conscious of my, 
my codependent moth to a attention flame. And yeah, I did, I was in a, a meeting and there were these two gentlemen and they started to have tension, conflict in the meeting. And yeah, you know, some people are looking around like no big deal. Someone's changing the subject. Someone else is like, you know, <laughs> trying to indirectly just have them stop and calm down. Mm. And it was on a Sunday. I didn't have therapy until Wednesday. And I knew I was going to talk about it on Wednesday in therapy. But yeah, in, in that meeting, I, I felt tense. Like I, I remember getting in my car and I was like, <sighs> trying to like breathe and calm yeah. myself down. And yeah, I'm curious, like how potentially if I had, you know, gotten some body work done that day or maybe Monday or Tuesday, how could that have helped me integrate it as opposed to waiting until Wednesday to talk through it, but sure. hold that tension you know, sure. pretty much those five days. Yeah. Thoughts. Yeah, no, it's, good. it's a fun question. I mean, the reality is, is that with, if there was something, let's say like a, like cranial sacral or some kind of deepening, um, unwinding opening so that there was more place for you to, to take that deep breath and have it, then the system wouldn't have even necessarily, you might have not, not had to talk about it on Wednesday. That thought might have mm -hmm. not even come to you because you were already able to digest it on a different level or have some space to be like, oh, what is happening? What's the story? All right, 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 check, check. You know, this situation, this situation. Oh, okay. You know, you have a little bit more room to, to hold it quite literally mm -hmm. and then and which helps you digest it and let it go. Um, and then, you know, or, and or you might have um, just from breathing that deeply for an hour, 90 minutes, had that, that access to you. So when you might have had more psychic energy as well, it's just kind of breath ability. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I will say being codependent, I do remember going to a massage when I was like maybe 22 or 23. And it was one of those, you know, commercial massage places. Mm -hmm. And I went and I was little, little codependent dummy. And my masseuse was a chatty Kathy. And for 60 minutes, I could not assert the boundary. Right. I, I don't, I don't want to talk. Right. So she's like, hi, how are you? How's your week going? Oh, oh, that's cool. What do you do? Oh, wow. Like, what do you, what do you do there? And for 60 minutes, Randy, this poor little codependent, I couldn't say to her, I, I prefer silence or I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's um, not it's not an anomaly. It happens. It's 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 interesting too, though, right? Because it becomes like, well, you know, what to be able to have that ability now to be just like, oh, where what was going on with me, and then to even recall, like, oh, right, like it's not always the environment, right? It's like at the end of the day, like we still, like we can't really leave the post of of that inner place. Because no one else could take care of it. No one else knows. Everyone's just trying to do what they think would be useful and helpful, which is awesome. But back, but back to the labyrinth, right? You don't know, you know, your most the the, the, the best laid intentions of another. That's not necessarily going to be the path that that person needs to take or needs mm -hmm. in that sixty minutes, right? So, um, no, it's a great example though, and I think I'm I'm pretty sure at twenty to twenty three, I had a the similar experience. So you're not you're certainly not alone, no. right? Right, yeah. but how how can the how deep the conditioning goes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So codependency does show up in the body. Body work can help alleviate codependency, and it can help integrate. Right, you said digest mm, conflict, tension, like big emotions before, or yeah, like as an adjunct with therapy or whatever work we're doing. 
And also if and when you do receive that help, yeah, just making sure you're not being codependent in that environment. It's important. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. It's it. You t- yeah, typically in a bodywork situation, it's more. Um, there's more of a thorough intake. It's more just like what what specifically. Um, what's your what's your riding edge of what you know what what you want to um, work with? Cranial sacral is is gigantic. I mean, it's it can go in so many places. It, it can even help. I mean, not even, but one one aspect it's really useful for is um, in perinatal psychology and uh, birth psychology, where um, especially after birth for new moms, right? It's kind of if whatever might have not gone to plan or or just brought up different things that wasn't expected because this is where that happens, um, that it's able to kind of it can it can it can give people a chance to almost replay the birth in some ways and or just wow. like it really this feeling of really like okay I'm back to being a person now I, I I have this little this little being that I'm very attached to right this the beginnings of of all the all the things that we spend all day doing yeah so um so there's all these larger frameworks that 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 it it kind of works with um, mm-hmm. versus kind of just like yes body okay touch and and um and relax right it's kind of um we're talking about some layers of consciousness if you will so so cranial sacral in some way is almost the uh you know it's like a psychodynamic type of body work in that way mm-hmm. beautiful yeah yeah it can be yeah. pretty it can go it can be very healing mm-hmm. yeah Any additional thoughts for why it's amazing? I feel like we've talked about that, but that was my next yeah. question. In addition to therapy, why cranial sacral is a great addition? I mean, I think in the end, there's also, we do so much great work in psychotherapy. It's often a first, you know, an onboarding to wrapping our head, getting some understanding of any of these things like, oh, right. I, you know, if I give myself an hour of time, I'm not only helping myself, but every other person that I'm going to interact with and the, the birds and the bees and the, every, every other live thing that could, that could feel, or, you know, any, ever going to help everything. Um, mm-hmm. Hopefully doing it, you know, for the self first, but whatever gets you there, right. It's, it's, it's this. So, when we do the work that we do in psychotherapy, it's often, um, it just, it can be very, very heady. And so psycho, something like cranial sacral, because sometimes it takes a while to really feel, it's going to, it's often going to take a while to drop in to the body on a deeper level for a variety of reasons, or we can, right. you know, why, why the body's not oh, immediately the safest place to just be without a plan. And so, um, to have that integrated in, even if it's like once a month, but to discharge, because basically it gives another forum where some of the insights that we make, what, whatever modality we're using in psychotherapy, it has a chance for it to really settle deep. And it's not uncommon for some insight to come in on the table of like, wow, there's some 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 issue, you know, almost almost like in the dream state, right? But we're doing we're dreaming. Some some things kind of work, trying to work itself out, work itself out, and it's like land somewhere, and it's like, oh, light bulb. What was your uh, light bulb light glide moment? Right. Yeah. The body is not the safest place to be without a plan. Sometimes that's the situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, right, just in your experience, observations, therapy is usually an onboarding to body work. It depends where, where your, you know, where your uh, coordinates are, right? If you're coming in from the medical model, chances are you're going to be referred to a psychotherapist before, a body worker in my world, I was in public health 
And um, I mean, I probably had some psychotherapy prior, but I, I didn't, those were two very separate worlds. Um, and I was in public health and then all of a sudden there were just these opportunities to learn about a lot of alternative health things and with body work and massage are one of them. Um, yeah. So yeah, it kind of just depends on uh, how it goes. It, what's fun about doing something like cranial sacral is it's not uncommon to bring it up and someone will be like, yes, you know, I had a friend who had that once, right? It's, it does get, get passed around and it does stick out as, as an experience though. And she said, or he said, you know, this was the experience. And um, so it's nice to know, it's nice to know that A, that people are, are hearing about it more. That's one thing I'd say in LA too, it, it like there's, there's definitely more of an awareness around it, um, which is, which is lovely. And um you know, the more that it starts to integrate with different medical models or different wellness models, the more um, there'll be a, a demand for it or people will understand why it, why it could be useful. Right. I'm curious, is there any like introductory cranial sacral exercise you can bestow with us? Um, sure, there has to be something, let's think. Um, Yeah, so let's try this, let's see. Um, so just like take a minute. And just kind of have a, yeah, have a moment. And just even notice in the moment, like where, where, does, where does the attention go? Where does your attention first wanna go? And then see if you can collect that attention and bring it to the feet. And really feel where the feet connect with the surface underneath, whether that be a shoe or the floor itself, carpet. And just let a breath come in in its own pace and rhythm, whatever what way it might be. Let's see, I guess we can, and then we take the hands and put it on either side of the head. So you wanna bring that behind the forehead. Yeah. Right, a little bit over the ears, yeah. And then let the shoulders relax though, let everything just relax. And just see what you can, what comes to the hands, right? There's gonna be the tendency to wanna to push to feel something and see what just a lot, what just rises into the hands from the bone. If you're focusing on the bone of the head right here. Just watch the part that wants to know. You can just invite it to just be an observer for now. And then go ahead and take the hands and put them one on top of another, like this, kind of like a fan, just flat, and put that at the back of the head, at the occiput, right where you would like sit back and let, let the head come in. Come, let the head just relax, um, come back on it and go ahead and do that. Just let the bone, right where the neck, how the head meets the bone, where the head meets the neck, let the, let the bone settle, the, the occiput, the back of the head settle into those hands. And then let another breath come through and let a head, breath come as if you were breathing from that area in your head where your hands are, all the way down to the feet. Maybe come back up and do another 
just letting that breath flow that full distance from the head to the feet. And then let that release and just come back to sitting and just notice for a second what you know, if you know, if you notice anything or not. I noticed I was worried I was going to do it wrong. Joanne's mm -hmm. club. <laughs> so we a member. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. And having the, the chance to notice it. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. So for those who are listening and not watching, I encourage you to tune in the last couple of minutes. You can see if we put our hands of our ears. Right, we're working on the, the green bone ah. here. Yes. And then behind our neck, kind of like the the businessman at the at the desk. Right back. Right. And then right, we hold yeah, it's like we did like that to so hold it. But yeah, whatever way it works. Yeah, just to hold that the full the, the occiput's a longer bone than we think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And regardless, honestly, it's just um, the, the the bones bones are, are separated by sutures, right? We don't have one big solid head bone, so um, it just just doing that much just gives every all the bones a chance to be like, hey, all right, I'm online. It's not my turn. Like I'm not fusing, I'm not joining. I'm doing my own thing right now. So again, oh. to paying homage to our codependent situation, we're trying to break out of. Right. Interdependent. Yes. Yes. It's my turn. Tending to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. How fun. Well, Randy, if people want to read more, hear more, where can they contact you? Uh, well, I two practices. I'd say for the body work piece, um, cranial sacral, I'm an inner wave body work. I-N-N-E-R-W-A-V-E bodywork.com. I have an office in Santa Monica and I also provide psychotherapy and I incorporate cranial sacral at different points, but for the most part, it's um, experiential, psycho, experiential depth, depth, depth oriented. And I work with uh, couples and individuals there mm -hmm. and that's inner, inner riches therapy. Wow. Inner wave and inner riches. Okay, I will put links to both of those in the show notes. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Pleasure. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, bye, everybody. Hey, girl. It's Marissa again. I'm not like a regular podcaster. I'm a cool podcaster, right? Thank you for listening and staying till the end. You can find me on Instagram at Therapy with Marissa. Email me, marissa at codependummy.com. Check out codependummy.com for more information on the show. And baby girl, a subscribe, rating, and review would be much appreciated. Till next time, I want you to remember, if you are feeling unseen, I see you. If you are feeling unheard, I hear you, and if you think that you don't matter, know that you matter to me. I want you to go out there so you can stop playing small and start taking up space, you dummy. And now, the disclaimer. Girl, this is not therapy, and I am not your therapist. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the host, publisher, or guests are rendering any legal, clinical, or other professional service. If you want or need a professional, please find one.